hello friends welcome to my channel Igno center so today we will go on with mg02 bridge trauma solve assignment and in the previous video which is our part one and part two you will deal there in question number one and question number two so here we deal with our next question which is question number three and here let me give you a read to the question so the question is what do you think is the dominant quality of helmet character discuss with suitable example and if possible if the video is became short we will also gonna deal with question number four and the question is can the alchemist be understood as a satire give suitable example and if again the question is video is too short then we will also finish the fifth question and let's move to the question uh, answers pdf so with the wasting our time so here you see all the questions given by ignos and we had already finished with question number one and then question number two so let's begin with question number three now let me search it here we see our question number three and the question is what do you think is the dominant quality of helmet character discussed with suitable example and the answer for this question is the character of Hamlet dominates Shakespeare's tragedy of the same name, yet Hamlet at the start of the play is not a commanding figure. Indeed, when we see the picture in his posture is defensive. Hamlet taking a passive in resentful stance towards the event that have fallen him. Slow to the conviction that the ghost is his dead father and the Claudius is guilty of regicide. Hamlet does not go straight to the task at hand. Hamlet delay or procrastination is something about which criticize have wonder and that the character himself agonize. His self Pre approach reaching an apex in Act 4, Scene 4, which concludes with the words, Oh, from this time forth, my thought be bloody or be nothing worth. Line 65 to 66. The question remains Why does Hamlet act? One response to this question stress. Hamlet as a man of thought and words, as opposed to this, Shakespeare, Danish Prince is one of the most intelligent protagonists in tragic drama. Unlike many other Elizabethan revenge tragedy heroes, Hamlet is given to philosophy and abstraction at time. It seems that the play is less about Hamlet taking action in the external world then it is about his grappling with the key existential problem of human existence from this standpoint hamlet does not act immediately because he is too preoccupied with analyzing his situation and himself in the broadest term imaginable hamlet is also a melancholy figure given to depression who is victimized by a cruel fate and compelled to undertake a revenge mission for which he is not prepared not only are hamlet misusing about life extensive they are uniformly dark seen in this light hamlet does not act because he lacked the emotional fortitude to do so, depression and courage being difficult to reconcile. 
There are, however, good reason for Hamlet to avoid acting precipitously. The story of old Hamlet murder is known to him only through the agency of a ghost and killing the king on the word of an appropriation is plainly a problematic and possibly mistaken act. Claudius explained his exile of Hamlet to England by referring to the prince's popularity among the Danish people. But the Danish people are a flick lot. Many of them come to let his curse against the prince. Killing a king is a weightly matter, and many modern critics have argued that in his particular circumstance, Hamlet is wished to defer action in the end. Hamlet does act defying Ogri in accepting the challenge to deal with Laetis. But the change in Hamlet character takes place in scene 1 of Act 5 and is expressed in his self-assertion that he is Hamlet the Dan. It is not in the final scene but in the graveyard scene immediately preceding it that a new self-defined Hamlet appear on the stage, ready for action, however it may be directed by divine will or by chance, a complex personality at the place start. Hamlet is all the more fascinating because he undergoes dramatic character development. So friends, till here we have finished question number three. And in the next or now let's move to the question number four because we have still only done with seven minutes so let's move with question number four now so here the question number four is can the alchemist be understood as a satire give suitable example and the answer for this question is in the alchemist johnson unassumedly satirized the foolish vanities and vice of mankind most notably greed induced cruelty people of all social classes are subject to johnson ruthless satirical wit he mocked human weakness and gullibility to advertising and to miracle views with the character of Sir Epicure Mammon who dream of drinking the elixir of youth in order to enjoy fantastic sexual conquest the alchemist focus on what's happened when one human being seeks advantage over another in a big city like london this process of advantage seeking in rife the trio and con artist Subtle face and dollar self devaluing small timers ultimately underdone by the same human weakness which they exploit in their victims. Their faith is for set dot in the place opening scenes which features them together in the house of love with fish master in a metaphor which runs through the play
the dialogue so stamped to exist in an easy imbalance like alchemical elements that will create an unstable reaction. Verily, ten line into the text, face and subtle quarrelly force do dull to quell their raised voice. Will you have the never hear you? Will you betray all? For centuries in London, the plug presented a very real danger to its citizen. However, some people were more concerned with other smaller dangers that city life offer, like prostitution, alcoholism, drug addiction, and gambling. In the alchemist, Ben Johnson presents the interesting idea that not only the plug thrives within the populated city, but vice also flourish. Since urban areas historical house more poor people than rulers area or desire for money may understandably become associated with the inner city. This grid as Johnson illustrates with his plot and character leads to people immoral activities. The alchemist is set in London in 1610. The same setting as when the play was first performed, so it became a commentary on the current social scenes. Because of the plug, Catarzian love it fills from the city to the countryside for safety. Upon leaving, he leaves his butler face in change of his house and First takes the opportunity to invite his friend Sustel and Dol Kaman to help him take advantage of strangers, greet with their profitable cons. The three characters convince numerous other characters that they can profit from Sustel Philosopher's Stone, which turns metal into gold, or from his illustrious vision. These characters vary from a gambler who wish to use substantial vision to win more money to two puritans who wish to bring money to their congregation. In fact, Dunson purposefully provides a wide span of immoral character to satirizing as he demonstrated in his statement that no climby breeds better matter than London for you whole bout square imposter and many person more Pologu seven to eight. Apparently Johnson believed that a large range of immoral people inhabited London, which is why he reflect this same from eventually love would return home to disrupt the guns profit from this numerous character and order is finally restored when love would forgive face because he arranged love with engagement to demi pliant the play plots and its character provides relative success to the early performance but it Little fell out of favor with audience and is rarely reproduced on modern stage. This early success most likely reflects the audience's interest in its immediate social relevance, especially as the play heavily satirizes its Puritan characters. These Puritan characters, Ananias and Tribulation, wish to raise money for their chairs. Yet, Softel and Fish suggest that the only possibility for making more money will be if they use the Philosopher's Stones to create gold. Thus, though Ananias refers to him as a faithful brother, he considers 
counterfeiting money and in turn defying the law these two characters present johnson option opinion of religious jealots who will defy all of man laws and moral in order to rigidly adhere to gods in fact johnson further mocked the puritans in his creation of tribulation wholesome ananias very jealous pastor who entirely contradict his wholesome name though ananias at least initially denies the philosopher's stone which defines god as it is a work of darkness and with philosophy blinds the eyes of man tribulation immediately reject his objection because he believed they must bend unto all means that may give furtherance to the holy cause tribulation is perfectly willing to use any means in his life in order to reap benefit for his congregation even if his actions are immoral thus he is willing to be mortal in order to benefit his life of supposed morality these two characters hypocrisize highly the central objection of johnson and his contemporaries as puritans objections to their place were based around the idea that the place were immortal yet they could be immoral as long as it benefit god this dislike of hypocrisy and disgrating representation of puritan become an even stronger theme in one of johnson later work in this way although rather different from some of johnson earlier work exhibits striking similarities to a play he wrote just four year later batho lomi fear this play display the interconnected dissonance between human indulgences and exploitation and is a play of craft and cunning the people who come to the fair and those who walk at the fair are alike in their infectious desire and avarice similarly subtil face and doll are really victims of their own greed thus as with the people who walk at the fair face and his accomplices are able to take advantage of and profit from various people because of their own excessive desire for money johnson increased disgust with puritanism and its reflection through the literature of the time present such an interesting cultural revolution since the increased public display of intolerance like with literature and performance led to the puritan colonization of america thus johnson the alchemist and other works provide with a societal window through which historian can see the motives vision for the beginning of a religious reformation the alchemist is a social satire which transcend the jacobian london period to our age it represent a type of all practitioners of fraud the heroes and his confederates personify the scientific charlatan and solomon knev with his indisputable accomplice who will continue to flourish as long as nature is mysterious and mankind gullibly in our age we find great penalty fully represented by spiritualist carivolians theosophists and the readers the play does represent similar situation 
and also the picture of a world turned upside down a society motivated by folly and greed there is an array of characters representing almost every degree of folly and gullibility like the zero place of nazarius oli so inka so friends till here we have completed question number four and three so in the next video we will move to question number five and finish it too so friends this was the short question so let's finish it yet in this video itself so question number five discuss the play pygmalion as a romance elaborate the play pygmalion by george bernard sir is like the previous post accurately stated primarily a social satire that belonged to the journal of romanticism and most specifically to the form of comedy of manners within this genre society is often more particularly by the way that the upper class act and think one must keep into consideration that gb saw is an irish playwright who produced pieces for a very complex british victorian audience victorian society is notorious for its classic nest nature for its hypocritical values and for its holier than thou attitudes when we take this into consideration we can safely argue that so literally laughed at the english victorian audience right in its face by pointing out the solo nature of their judgment of other people you see this creature will her curb stone english the english that will keep her in the gutter to the end of her days well sir in three months i could pass that girl of as a duchess and an ambassador garden party i could even get her a place as lady maid or shop assistant which required better english that's the sort of thing i do for commercial millionaires and on the profit of it i do genuinely scientific work in food notics and a litter as a poet of maltonic lines the central theme of the play revolves around making a pleasant girl looking portrayal duchess in an upcoming fashionable event in the process of transforming eliza so irreverently point at the chorus and terrible image that the lower class have of the upper class by making jokes at the way Eliza should pronounce words and use specific mannerism. These words are exaggerated and made to look ridiculous. The mannerism are meant to mock the aristocrats. The language used by Eliza and her peers throughout the transformation process just adds salt to the wound. It brings the upper class sprawling down from their self-made pedestal. They fall far from portraying the English as totally kind and intelligent people so so us how easily to deceive they can be if only you make someone look and sound the way an aristocrat is meant to look and sound because of this clear attack to a society that accept no criticism so often mixed review about the play it is not so much because of its form but because of its central message so seems to have been quite interested in putting out social faults and this is obviously something that in a solo society will not transform into a vote of approval Next, so Pygmalion actually emphasized the opposite of these qualities. Number one, the flower girl represents the nature, country, life, and she is not considerable, worth 
ability to speak to her social better except in accord with strict law governing strict seller behavior number two her language is the most common possible welfare day dot but um, a matter should need now better to spoil a poorie girl's balance than run away a thought being and it is the transformation of her language that is the subject of the play focus and it is her common way that art the first to go as she is scrabbled and clothed in japanese silk no elematic symbolistic figure are found in her unspoiled country was then enlightened the spiritual aspect of life and lead to enlightenment number four higgins whole approach to everything is decidedly practical and objective as is the study of linguistic itself for this is must be concluded that there are no discernible element of romantic era literary philosophy in so pygmalion some element celebrated by romantic might be identified in the roman tale of pygmalion by ovid upon which so drew for his story the sculptor pygmalion was so entrusted by the beauty of his sculpture of a woman that he sought venus to and live in her so he could wed her however because so base his play on the then relative new scientific study of linguistic and the darwinian derived truth of not true over nature in the experiment of turning lisa into a woman who greatly improved upon nature it is difficult to suggest that so mean to embody any romantic era literary philosophy in pygmalion so friends till here we have completed all our mug zero to solve assignment assessment so hope this video will help you to do our with your assessment and if you are new to our channel please make subscribe to our channel and in the given description box you will get the link of my another channel please make subscribe to this thank you